Uh, now, I've seen the there's a lot of electron transport chain videos on YouTube. At my uh, level, um, they explained it a little different. This is not including the ATP synthase. I'm going to take you up to the oxygen, the primary electron acceptor. We're going to start off with NADH. Okay. And that's going to go to flavoprotein number one. This is bound to FMN, F, E, S, which is a large complex. This is also known as NADH dehydrogenase. And this is site one, because this is our first ATP produced. The electrons are from FP1 to coenzyme Q, also known as ubiquinone. Feeding into ubiquinone, we have some other different electrons. We have succinate, comes through flavor protein number two to CoQ. Flavor protein number two, also known as succinate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenate. Glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle. Um, I have another video on this. You can see the exact mechanism bringing the electrons to CoQ. FP3, which is glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay, and another source of electrons is acyl CoA, fatty acid coenzyme A. That goes through FP4, which is, you guessed it, Acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. These biochemists were very creative with their names, I know. Anyways, it makes it easy. From CoQ, CoQ is going to be transporting the electrons to cytochrome B. This is site number two. What happened at site one? We had an ATP. So, ATP. All right, site two brings that to cytochrome C1, which then will bring us to site C. I'm going to bring this down this way. Cytochrome A1 plus A3, and that would be site number three. What happens? ATP. And then finally, the electrons are brought to oxygen, which goes on to ATP synthase and turns out a bunch of ATP. A couple things to note about this. Site 1, Site 2, and Site 3. They all have their special inhibitors. Amytal, rotenone. Antimycin A. And at site number 3, carbon monoxide. Site 3's inhibitors are cyanide, carbon monoxide, H2S, and azide. I want to ask you, do you ever sit and wonder it so?